Good to go. Good to go. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. It's going to be a really excellent conversation to kind of round out the Bump 2020 mural festival. So we'll get started. If we just want to go kind of down the line, just introduce yourself and yeah, a little bit about your work. Sure. Um, I'm Doris. I'm from Montreal. Um, I've been doing uh, murals since about 2017. Before that, I was an illustrator, artist, doing commercial work. Um, so that really lends into kind of my style. I work in a very kind of narrative, dreamy, colorful style. Um, so a lot of the, the murals I do have like stories and, and themes like that, a lot of characters. So. And I'm Marcy Harris, and I'm from Calgary, and this is my first mural. And um, normally I do like large-scale paintings with acrylic and oils. My name is Michelle Hoogveld, and I'm from Calgary. And I've been painting murals since about 2015. And I would say they're very bright, geometric, and um, yeah, happy. Um, my name is Sergey Rutten, also known as Toner. Um, I'm a graffiti artist and a large-scale muralist in Calgary. Um, it's been home since 2004 and uh, painted for a long time, but uh, focusing on murals probably for the last seven years or so. Great. And I'd love to start off by just hearing a little bit about the concept for your murals and if you even want to share where the location is. Um, Toner, maybe we'll start with you. Yeah, sure. Um, my mural is located on Fusion Sushi on 17th Avenue, and I think it's 11th Street Southwest. Um, the mural itself, it uh, has a parrot in the middle of it that's surrounded by flowers. Um, the flowers and the color scheme is sort of a play on the Fusion Sushi logo without being too direct of a reference to the business. And then uh, the meaning behind the parrot is uh, sort of like good fortune and uh, keeping positive energy while pushing the negative away. Yeah. Thank you. Michelle? So in a lot of my work, I've been focusing on the message of love. And that's been through the form of geometric hearts um, abstracted. And on this one, I wanted to push my style a little bit and bringing a little bit of the influence of something I call said the people, where it's these lip paintings. So, but creating it in more of a digital style and um, bringing the message of expression through love together. Yeah. Um, my mural is just off 17th Avenue. It's on 15th, and I'm not sure of the exact address, but you can see it right from 17th. And my concept is, um, so it's the barbershop. So I, I came up with the idea of painting the inside of the barbershop on the outside walls. And I kind of thought that would be interesting because most of my work is the exteriors, like my large scale paintings are exteriors of places in Calgary, so I thought it would just be a cool twist. Yeah. Um, my mural is called uh, Upstream, um, and it's basically a group of people from all different walks of life kind of trudging through uh, these crashing waves. Um, the whole thing was kind of about like my reflections on the time we're living in, things that have happened recently, um, and it's really just about like an homage to anyone who's ever kind of like walked against the current um, to kind of speak up for what's right, um, and all the like pressures and economic and social and um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, pressures that uh, people face. Um, uh, but the whole kind of significance of the group of people is that uh, by walking together, it's kind of like, you know, we can stay standing and, and keep going. Um, specifically, I wanted to do it here because it, it was a, um, a piece that I had designed before I was sitting on it. Um, but coming to Alberta and like things that have happened with legislation, I thought it was really important to kind of be like, okay, like, you know, it's harder to do, but you know, go for it. And yeah, you know. and you're bringing up so many interesting threads about yeah uh, murals, kind of tying in current events. So we'll we'll definitely be revisiting that. Um, but I'm curious because this is such an inter interesting panel because we have some mural veterans, we have some folks um, attempting murals for the first time. And so I'm curious to understand kind of your your previous artistic practice and how you bring it forward into your mural work. And Marcy, I might pick on you for this to to start off because yeah, this is your first mural. And um, yeah, how 
how your previous practice is coming forward in, in your mural. Yeah, so I feel like I sort of um, highlighted that the first, like with the last question, but yeah, I I did a series of work and it was actually called, um, it was actually, I didn't want to make it specifically about COVID, but it was like sort of isolated um, different businesses in, in the city. I had started doing um, sort of like house, like um, paintings of houses, and then they sort of just, um, I guess migrated to like these businesses and like sort of the isolated um, state and where they were at. And, and then because with the mural, I kind of wanted to take some chances and do something different. Um, still s sort of sticking with the same idea and the concept, but I wanted to like um, instead create the inside and because I wasn't then painting it on the outside. Um, and then my plan is to actually do a painting on canvas of the actual nice. mural. In the end, yeah. Cool. Yeah. How about you? Um, it's interesting because my canvas practice, before I started murals, the color palette was quite muted, um, lots of gray tones and a lot of collage. And then as soon as I started doing public artwork, that is where my color palette completely shifted, and I wanted to bring this vibrancy to public spaces. So. It also changed to in bringing it back to my canvas work and taking color theory into that aspect of my practice. Um, and then also blending abstraction with figurative work because before it was very figurative and or just abstraction. And now I think I'm trying to fuse both. Mm -hmm. Nice. Doraz, what about you? Oh yeah, um, so I kind of started as a traditional illustrator, um, you know, educated in the kind of editorial illustration type thing. Um, but I found out quickly enough that uh, I wasn't really kind of like built for that, you know, small job kind of thing. Um, I was more into kind of like storybooks and, and stuff like that. Um, that transitioned into mural making because I was interested in kind of like how the whole industry was changing. Um, there was we we're not in the golden age of illustration anymore, so you kind of had to be resourceful of of kind of which avenues to go. Um, and it seemed like a lot of the muralists that I followed kind of were bringing that kind of sensibility into it. Um, I got really lucky with my first job. Uh, I was working as a prop designer, and someone was like, "Hey, you draw? You know, these people are looking for a mural." And uh, yeah, it just went from there. And how about you? Um, for me, I guess it was the the thought of moving forward from doing traditional graffiti and kind of there's this concept of uh, doing productions with other people. You color match and you add some characters and you do backgrounds. So it was a sort of like a natural transition to uh, push what I able to paint with like both technically and in meaning. Oftentimes, not every time, but uh, yeah, just kind of like that push for self-development -develop to to go from something that you're so used to and like you have your own style and you can paint, you know, with your eyes closed almost and uh, to, yeah, just like get better and, you know, more technically sound. And it might linger on you or pick on you for one more question, which is um, what, how would you define the difference between graffiti art and, and mural work? Um, I think it's basically different visuals so like murals don't always have graffiti you know as part of it and graffiti itself is basically you know stylized letters so it's like you know letter signs in a sense mural can show images or abstract or whatever right and uh, so that was probably like the main difference um, some graffiti productions they're kind of like pushing that limit of like what one would call a mural, just because they're so intense and the backgrounds and you know different elements that people put in to those walls are pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. No, I think that's an interesting kind of differentiation to draw. So oh yeah, it was exciting to learn that that was your background to finally answer that question once and for all. Um, 
so you know when we're considering mural work of course that it is out in the public it's it's on a building it's on a street and so there's this kind of built environment to consider when when you're creating your art and so I'm wondering if you do take in kind of the built landscape of where your mural is when you're creating your work or is it you know create the work first and then um, just let the kind of context of the built space be what it is uh, Michelle maybe we'll start with you on that one okay I think always the the shape or the architecture of the building you're working on will somehow influence and affect the design concept um, for me it's if something protruding out how will I work with that so that visually people will maybe find interest in that or it could somehow blend into the design more um, and then also it's about changing sometimes the feeling of the environment through your art so when people see this concept once it's painted on there how will it affect their day or their walk their drive their bike all those things so for me it's bringing an element of joy happiness and um, like more meaning to their day Great. Doraz, what about you? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely consider it. Um, I, I don't think I would I make work before and then we'll put it on a wall. I think it's like I'll make sure I have the wall and then compose with it. Sometimes work with the architecture, sometimes completely ignore it. And that can be nice too, you know, where you're just like you paint over a vent and, and all that stuff. You're not like doing being too conscious of it. Um, but yeah, really just mimicking uh, what Michelle had said, just uh, kind of keeping in mind that uh, it's a really great thing that the wall can be a very great thing for the neighborhood, um, uh, you know, if you do a good job or whatever. Um, but uh, I, I more consider like the urban landscape and more of like the person's experience with an image as they walk to work and, and stuff like that than the architecture. Yeah. Nice. Toner, what about you? Um, I would say for me it varies. I, uh, sometimes you have a cool idea and a great concept and you do design before you might have this or that building and then you can adapt that design to the architecture and you know again like Michelle mentioned there's certain elements that sometimes you play with and they impact uh, the flow or you know your design like how you structure your piece um, and then other times it's like based on the requirements so mm -hmm. like the clients needs wants you know their ideas and then you just kind of create a piece in your own style and you know that is that Marcy where do you land with that um, so I agree with everybody and I for me, it was important, I'm just being the first time doing a mural, I really wanted to connect before I did anything with the business owners inside and just get their, um, just to get their feedback in terms of what they wanted to see. And I liked, I liked the energy of other people and like, I just, they expressed that they just wanted something colorful. And so I took that into consideration. Obviously color is the, like one of the most important things that I do with my work. And so that, w that's probably like the primary thing that I consider when I'm doing it. And I, and even like some of the murals, I, I like just in terms of like being in the community, you get a lot of people standing in front taking pictures and you know I could see that happening a lot with a lot of the murals that are happening right now for sure yeah and in, your, and in a lot of your answers just now, you also touched on like the people impact, which of course is kind of a, an extra layer of consideration in, in public art because you know with gallery work or or um, other more kind of private work, there's sometimes like a, a barrier to entry, so to speak, but with public art, it is out in the public. And so just to kind of dive a little bit deeper about how you are considering the public in your work, um, I'm kind of getting a sense, anyway, I'll, I'll just let that land where it will. Um, to what degree do you consider, yeah, the, the public impact? And uh, Michelle, I'd love to start with you there. And I know you kind of already answered it, but just to dive a bit deeper in terms of, yeah, that, that personal impact. I think, again, it's, it's about that feeling of positivity for me through my work. And I want it to invite people to a space um, and also interact with it. I think that's a really cool thing about street art is it's not as much like gallery or studio work where you may look at it and have a discussion. This people are actually like standing in front of it or like bringing film crews or things like that. Just 
to be in front of a wall. So I think for me with color, that has been a huge thing um, and just bringing vibrancy to public art. Yeah, yeah. nice. Turner, what about you? Um, there's definitely consideration for the public like in regards to what it is you paint and whether it's contextually or just like through the elements. But a lot of the times, again, it's uh, I think you create the work you want to create first and foremost for yourself. Um, if that's like, you know, your own painting, not a commission per se. Um, and then, you know, artists, it's like different for everybody. Some people might like it, some people might not. And uh, I mean, you hope that most do, and uh, but there's the off chance that someone might not and just the reality of, you know, different people, different opinions, so yeah. Marcia, what about you? Um, yeah, I feel like for me, I've I've gotten a lot of like just being the first time newbie. Um, I'm just really, I I get really um, energized by like people stopping and chatting, and I love to share what I'm doing. And I feel like people are really really thankful and and grateful for. They're like, thanks for making the city more beautiful. Thanks for making our neighborhood more beautiful with your work. And like that's just enough to like keep you going and. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Doris? Yeah, I, I definitely consider uh, the public more so recently. Um, just because I think, uh, I don't know when it kind of happened, but I started to get a lot more um, kind of uh, satisfaction from having a bit more of a message uh, in my pieces. And those were always the kind of you know, street artists I looked at, up to. Um, and thinking about street art in general, too, um, and how it is like kind of a reflection of of uh, the society that it, that it's in, and it's kind of like you were saying, it's the the accessible version of it. And it's kind of like what people are actually thinking in a city. Um, and because I come from, I don't come from like a graffiti background and 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 stuff like that. I, I kind of like, okay, where am I? You know, navigating that. It's like this new wave of muralists coming in from you know illustration and uh, and art and stuff like that. And kind of where do I stand? Um, so yeah, I think that. Um, the way that people react to things that I make that are beautiful, I really want them now to have kind of be kind of like thought provoking. Uh, trying to get both of those because I know that there's like beautification projects and more like message projects, and so I'm trying as much as possible to fuse those. But, yeah. Yeah. And where did that turn kind of happen for you to kind of yeah turn from the beautification a bit more into the message based? Um, I think it really kind of like hit home when we first started isolation. Actually, um, I had done some kind of nonprofit work that I really enjoyed, um, and then kind of went more, more into commercial work, like advertising and things, which uh, tends to be a little bit more void of any sort of emotion and, and things like that. Um, and then having the isolation, uh, you know, trying to make the best of it, uh, had a lot of reflection and writing, and was writing every day and making some pieces finally from like my own inspiration uh, and that's kind of just like how it came out I'm not really like prescribing anything for anyone just like reflecting on it and, you know nice. and so this is the third year um, that uh, this festival has been able to commission uh, murals in the belt line and I'm curious to hear what you think the the role of up the role of public art can play when it comes to community building. Because, you know, this project specifically deals with the Beltline, which is very kind of inner city neighborhood, but how how can public art kind of contribute to a sense of place and a sense of community? Um, Marcia, maybe we'll start with you there. Sorry, I keep picking no, on that's you. okay. Um, yeah, like I feel like I I feel like it's kind of something that we've, we've all kind of touched on with all the questions. Um, I feel like Again, like like I said, like I the energy from the people. I feel like just walking around and like turning your head and seeing a mural there and a mural there, and it's just like catching up. And like we have 50, we're gonna have 50 murals by the end, and it's like super exciting to know that there's so many more walls to touch. And it's yeah, you're just like. It, I feel like there's the energy with the people like riding their bikes, scootering around, walking, or whatever, just like enjoying like the visuals and the, the elements that that are making the city like more beautiful yeah great toner um for me i guess i've been doing this way before bump started so you know there was always that uh like you find a cool wall and you're like i want to paint it or 
you know, we go and ask permission and do a mural. And the bump project in its fourth year, um, you know, it's it's definitely a great way to beautify the city and, uh, you know, build that culture of muralism through, you know, national, international artists, as well as, you know, supporting locals. And, uh, you know, the, I think most people are generally stoked about what's happening, like in the city. I definitely am because Calgary used to be fairly gray. And, uh, you know, again, like touching on the graffiti kind of aspect, the buff is strong in the city. So there's not a lot of color to begin with. And for this project and just all the different artists, like, you know, in the last four years, it's been, it's been quite a change, like transformation. And um, more and more people get engaged with the artworks, right? Whether it's through Instagrams or, you know, filming, et cetera, right? Just, it uh, adds vibrancy to the city. Doris, I know you're visiting us from Montreal, um, but yeah, how, I'd actually be curious to know how it's also built a sense of place in Montreal and how you can kind of compare and contrast it with what you're seeing in Calgary. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to do anyway, yeah. so that's yeah, okay. good. <laughs> um, no, it's great. So uh, I am originally from Ontario, um, and one of the things coming into Montreal, because it's a little further along in terms of how m much street art there is, I, um, is and, you know, mural festival and things, is uh, I walked out, I was walking around town the first time in Montreal, and I was like, oh my god, you know, there's all these artists that I know internationally. Like, this city wears art on its sleeve. Like, this is amazing. Um, and it really was like, this is a place I could be proud to, to live because it's like the public appreciates the art in this way and they're like, you know, bold about it. Um, and so seeing kind of like uh, bump and uh, evolve a little bit and um, talking to some of my pals who are here um, and it's getting bigger and bigger, it's just like there's, there's more vibrancy. It, it really s sets like a sense of ownership over a neighborhood. Uh, and sense of discovery because when something else, you know, crops up sometimes, you know, you won't walk a path for a month or so and then it's like there's like a new mural, it's like a new mole or something, but like in a positive way. Uh, and, uh, so yeah, I mean, um, it absolutely built community and like it, it only brings positive things, I think, just like more color, more art on the walls. Yeah. Michelle? I think um, the great thing about Bump and murals in general i feel like the festivals are expanding globally like every even little city is starting to pop out with their own festival and the great thing with that is it creates almost like this piece of connection for an area as well as placemaking so then friends are like oh we'll meet up here or even a really good friend of mine he has two little daughters and his goal during covid was to bike to every mural and then now his like three-year-old daughter any times that she sees public art she's like dad dad stop there's a mural and so it's just like i think it gets people really excited for where they live and what they are a part of because it's not just about the artist creating the work it's like everyone is now together in it which is pretty cool <laughs> i appreciate that and especially what you said about um placemaking i think that's a kind of really key concept throughout um this this project um Without getting too negative on this question, uh, Calgary has, you know, kind of an interesting relationship with public art, and there have been some projects in the past that, um, you know, have have elicited more discussion than others. But yeah, the the murals have been really well received. So um, I'm curious to understand why you think murals are are kind of for lack of a better word, maybe accept it a little bit easier than, than maybe more sculptural um, pieces. Uh, Toner, maybe we'll start with you there. <laughs> That's a tough one. Um, okay, two cents on that thought, like is murals just per square foot price-wise is a lot more accessible and typically for one sculpture you can do maybe like, you know, five, ten, 15 walls depending on the size and sort of who the artist involved with and I feel like with that kind of in mind like and the fact that you know mural lifespan doesn't necessarily have to be up forever and uh, you know 
general public they get a sense of like okay am I like this mural am I not like that one and then but like the one sculpture per se just might be in that place and it's there for the next 25 30 whatever many years um, so I think that's why they're probably more like accepted as a form of public art as opposed to others but yeah that's good Michelle um, very much what Toner just said there. Um, also, one consideration that I've discussed with other artists is um, sometimes it's placement of these large sculpt sculptural pieces. I feel like so many of them, like the Blue Ring, for instance, I feel like it would be so cool if it was in the middle of a park because um, then people could actually interact with it and see it, where um, when it's just on the side of a highway, you know, it's not as. I guess accessible for people. So then when you spend that much money and then people can't even kind of enjoy it, I think that should be a consideration maybe for future projects. Um, and yeah, the budget is a, a big ish, I'd say, consideration as well. When you could do transform an entire neighborhood or just one space in particular. So yeah. But I mean, it's all learning. I think cities, as they bring art in, they, they grow and they discover like new ways of doing things. So it's a process, yeah. Marcia? So for me, I would think for as a mural, um, it's, it's almost like you're improving the wall and like with and then with the uh, sculpture it could be seen as an interruption so and not that it would be but it would be something that would be considered. So I think that for me, for example, my wall is needs to have paint on it. And I, I feel like it was an improvement. And I honestly think that that would be the consensus for most people when they, they are, there's a mural going on a wall. It's like we are improving the space. So that's what I would say about that. Oh, that's a good perspective. Karaz? Yeah, I mean, it's all really solid points. I think that like, if I were to answer the question, it would yeah. just be all of those things. But uh, I think money defi definitely comes into play. Uh, the ephemeral nature of murals comes into play. Uh, that like kind of building owners like oh, might be scared of commitment. You can always paint over. Um, you know, it's less of an investment. Um, I don't know if bureaucracy necessarily thinks of this, but uh, just the idea that, you know, because murals, there more can be done and, you know, things can get painted over and uh, new murals on top of old murals or whatever, um, it really, for me, kind of reflects what art should be. And it, it's not necessarily this kind of like thing that gets preserved and is archived. It's really just like it's life and it's, it's evolving and, and changing all the time. And people in the city are changing people are getting older uh, I think that the murals should reflect that or like the street art should re reflect that um, so having more temporary public art I think can be more realistic to, to how we function as people you know yeah. mm -hmm. I really like that idea of the, the kind of ephemerality of it as well <clears throat> I think that's uh, yeah something definitely that that plays in and like you said, kind of the life cycle of a city, life cycle of a neighborhood, so I appreciate that. So maybe to, as, as we sign, uh, kind of slowly wind down and to turn this into, turn the corner into a more positive kind of perspective there, what do you think individuals in, in the city, um, in Calgary, can do to continue to champion public art and to continue to champion um, activities like the, the mural project? How can we continue to encourage folks to, yeah, be, be arts champions um, yeah, in that way. Uh, Michelle, maybe I'll pick on you there. Ooh, can you come back to me? Yeah, 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 no problem. Uh, Doraz, why don't we go to you? Uh, sure, I guess... Um in the simplest sense, just like the, continuing to participate in these festivals. I mean, like Bump has provided, has, is facilitating that, the participation. So kind of even during this time when we have to be so distanced, it's like the tours and things like that, um, posting and just like keeping tabs. It's like things are still happening even though we have to kind of like be apart. Um, because, I mean, mural festivals are kind of lucky in a sense that like it is distanced anyway. There's machinery, you can't go near the artists. So like, that's cool, you stand back, it's large scale. Um, so participating, taking photos, tagging the artists, that's a big thing so that you kind of like get things going. Um, it can provide legitimacy for artists uh, when they when they kind of have that reference point. So yeah, I think that's just participating. Yeah. Nice. Toner, what do you think? Um, I would say for, for the public to perhaps 
you know, consider supporting the artists, um, specifically local, especially during this uncertain times, because I feel like, you know, if there's certain industries that were really struggling, um, who would normally say support the artists, then like the artists are even, you know, past this, right? Like I know for a lot of individuals, this year has just been full of changes and broken plans and whatnot. So I think um, as more and more walls appear and with the understanding that, you know, there's a lot of, again, national and international talent that's coming to the Calgary to make Calgary a better, more beautiful city, there's still local artists here who, you know, need support. So whether it's a business or an individual, whether it's a private painting um, or a commission for the side of their business, like it doesn't have to be in Beltline, it can be anywhere in a city and that space can be improved and the artist could be supported. And um, in turn, the artist then continues, you know, living in in Calgary, like in their own communities and supporting other businesses, whether it's through the local grocery store, etc. So I feel like it needs to be kind of like a, yeah, like around, around there. Yeah. Marcia? So I think Bump's been really great about promoting the event, and this is my first year being really involved, obviously, but and just getting people excited. And I feel like just having the energy of people getting excited is, is support for me. Like that's how what I would consider to be support. And just being where we're at right now with like COVID and being isolated, people are just like going to social media on that on that platform all, all the time. And just I, li I like the creativity of just like being. Um, we're not, you know coming together as a group, we're not congregating, but we're like still in active and we're just doing it differently. So. I think something that would be really amazing would be, um, because with events, things like that, usually there's some sort of creative component to it. So whether it's um, a music festival or a business putting out a campaign, it's thinking a little bit outside of the box and kind of like what Toner was saying is like, okay, how can we involve this local talent and whatever artistic field it may be, but how can we bring this extra like dynamic excitement um, and like just that extra flavor for people when they are doing things? Um, so yeah, I think thinking outside of the box a little bit, yeah. yeah. If I may, Please? just yeah. to add a little bit to that, I think it's also important for you know public and people who are experiencing what us artists create in the public realm is to perhaps get some more education and see what other places around the world are doing and how cool certain things can happen. There's again, there's so much you can do with art, with different art forms and how it can be incorporated into everyday life situations. So kind of like education of the masses is just as important as, you know, participation within um, the festival itself. I think too it comes back to what you were saying earlier. Sometimes storytelling through the artwork is what really draws people in. So I think maybe as artists too, like having that responsibility through social media and stuff is like maybe sharing our stories a little bit more to then collaborate with other people to share stories together. Yeah. And adding to that, I think, <laughs> sorry, yeah, yeah. but I honestly, people are so interested in what like sort of what what it, what inspired you like how did you get this concept and oh that's so interesting oh i love that like it just makes people excited and happy to like have an understanding of of the art that's that's that they're seeing sort of firsthand and in work in progress I love that answer. I think, yeah, we went to kind of the micro, which is, you know, continuing to support uh, artists on an individual level, to the macro, which is, yeah, that kind of larger scale education. I really appreciated that. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, is there anything else that you'd like to add uh, as we kind of start to wind down? I think we covered a lot of ground, but is there any kind of final words of wisdom for folks to know? <laughs> Just keep coming and checking out the work. Perfect. Um, I want to say thanks to Beltline Neighborhood Association as well as the sponsors for um, supporting artists 
putting this event on despite the current situation in the world. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it's important. I know a lot of stuff got canceled, so you know, kudos to making this happen for the fourth year in a row. And it's uh, it's big for Calgary. It's huge. Like this place is becoming awesome. Mm -hmm. For sure. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks.